Okay, I just did a quick setup for today, but I just wanted to go over some quick tips for you about getting your drone license. I just passed my test this week and uh, there were a lot of things that were just hard to find and figure out and whatever. Once you found them, then you got on the right path and you're good to go. But I just wanted to share some tips with you guys to get you on the right path. Make sure you know where you're going and what you need to do to get there. So let's get into it. So first things first, who needs to actually take this test? If you're gonna be doing any kind of commercial work with your drone, making money off of it in any way, shape or form, you need to register your drone. Well, you need to get the FAA Part 107 license to do that. Everyone needs to register their drone if it's over uh, 0.55 pounds, up to 55 pounds, and there's a separate registration for larger drones. And that's everything included if you've got any kind of attachments on the drone. So even if you get a small 250 gram drone and then you put something on top of it, it pushes up above that weight and you have to register it. So keep that in mind. But if you're below that, there is still an exam for you to take and you can still register your drone and all that stuff too. If you're just a hobbyist or something like that, it's called the trust exam, I believe. I didn't go too far into that because that's not what I was going for, but that did did get mentioned. I'll put something up here or in the comment or in the description down below uh, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, next is what to do first. What do you need to do first? So first thing is go to FFA Drone Zone and register your drone. You're gonna put in your model number and your information there and uh, register your drone. It is $5 per drone and that lasts three years, I believe. And then you go onto the IATSE website and you register yourself as a person, uh, but you don't apply for anything yet. After you have set up your registration for your drone, and registered your account with IACRA, then you will go to the uh, PSI website. Uh, I think there's another one that does it as well, but I went through PSI and they ask for your um, FFA tracking number, which you'll get from registering on IACRA. You'll put that in, you put in the other information, and then you'll be able to take a, set up a time slot for a test at one of your local testing centers. You want to get there early, about 30 minutes or even more, um, just to make sure you're prepared so you can do some last minute studying so that you can sign in to wherever you're going and make sure they have everything they need and also so you're not late and you lose that money that you put down. So I paid $175 for my test. Um, if you're late, it's gone. If you don't take the test at all or whatever, they, they don't give you a return on that. So uh, keep in mind that it will cost money and there is no return. I also wanted to get there early because uh, I had a feeling that the map was wrong. So the address that was on the website that they sent me was off. It was across the street and it was actually the other way. So it was actually out of school. So I went to the school and then I had to go into the building, find out which building I had to go into and then which room to go into. So it took me a minute to actually get to the testing center. Um, so keep that in mind, depending on where you're taking your test. Sometimes if you go to an airport, you may not be very clear exactly where to go in the airport to take your test. So uh, keep that in mind when arriving early as well. Went to my test and they sat me down in the booth. You cannot use uh, your cell phone. Uh, I had to lock into a locker, my hat, keys, wallet, cell phone, anything extra I had, um, water bottle. So I just sat down at the computer, answered my 60 questions. It took me about 45 minutes and then I went back for another few minutes to review all those, but they give you two hours and it was 60 questions. And then when the test was done, I called the proctor over. He said, you're good to go. Let me print off your test results. He gave me my test results so I know then if I passed or not, and I did, but that's not it. Just because you passed doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> it means you, got, you passed the knowledge test. Once you pass your test, they'll give you a sheet and uh, it'll have an exam ID on there. And you'll go back to the IACRA website and you'll uh, go to the apply section this time. So once you log back in, you go to apply, and start new application, uh, pilot, remote pilot, other path information, and start application. And then you'll enter your uh, exam ID number and all the other information they're asking you there for, and you'll hit your, and you'll submit your application for your actual license. So passing the knowledge test is not your license, they're two different things. You need a 70% to pass the test, which is 42 questions out of 60, and that's really pretty easy uh, if you do study. Moving on to studying, there are some hour, hour and a half long um, training videos on YouTube 
and I did watch some of them and they are good and very helpful. It's good to have that rep repetition of process, but I also did get a class uh, that went walked me through everything and there is so much more than what is on those hour, hour and a half videos. So don't be fooled by watching those and thinking you're good to go. There's a ton more. I went to UAV Coach and I went through all of the different sections of chapters they had. Uh, there's so much information there. And I went through that through the entire week and they have questions at the bottom of each one that are sample questions from what you would expect on the test. Uh, and just doing that helped me understand what I was gonna get into and just know the format of the questions and everything like that so much easier. But if you're into it, some of that information is actually really cool. Uh, I really liked learning how to read the vector maps and the METAR reports and stuff like that. So uh, maybe you're into that too, um, but you definitely do need to know it for passing the test to get your part 107 drone license. But what happens if I don't get my license? Well, <laughs> you if you get caught, you could be slapped with a $100,000 fine. And I don't know many people that can cover that. So yeah, I would just get the license. It's much better, it's more official. Uh, it's something you can tell your clients about. They say, hey, I do have my drone license. You know how to safely operate in a day and understanding the wind changes. Uh, I was about to go shoot the other day with my drone and just knowing, having the information about the wind I know not to send it up because I could have lost my drone. It would have just taken it. Um, and it would have been really hard to get it back uh, to the landing pad. So yeah, that information does actually help you and save you. Another thing to know is the remote ID. That is a law that was passed last year. It is not gonna go into true effect until September of this year, 2022. And you'll have a year from there to implement it. And what it means is that your drone is sending out a signal to other aircraft in the area, letting them know that your drone is operating at this height, at this speed, at this whatever, and it sends the name and information of your drone or to whoever's around. So having that uh, incorporated in your drone is gonna be required. Uh, there are attachments you can add onto your drone. So hopefully DJI will do something soon and the drones that we have won't be useless. Yeah. You will not be able to fly your DJI drone if it does not have remote ID. So those are some quick things that I learned. Hopefully that helps you prepare and know what to do in your situation, uh, whether you should move forward or if you're okay where you're at. Um, but probably go ahead and move forward, get the FFA drone license easy just go ahead and do it and everything will be a lot easier all right see you guys